What is up people? So recently you might remember that I did a video on cooking rice with coconut oil and the clean benefits. I've got a video today that measures blood sugar spikes when doing so. And again, uh, let's see what he says in the video. So today I want to see if cooking rice with coconut oil can reduce the glycemic impact on my blood sugar. There's a lot of buzz about this online at the moment and I want to put it to the test. So apparently by cooking rice along with coconut oil, you can increase the resistance starch and thereby reduce the glycemic index of that rice and some people are actually saying that you can reduce the digestive carbohydrates by as much as 60 percent which seems like an awful lot to me you have to pay attention to the nuance and the words he chooses okay maybe i'll talk about it after i watch i'll comment on it after i watch but that is a thing you have to pay attention maybe i'll talk about that after watching this is five ounces of regular rice this is cooked the normal way with just water i'm going to use this today as a benchmark from which to measure the coconut rice tomorrow let's see what this does to my blood sugar all right it's been a couple of hours since i've had the rice i do want to add that all of my tests are done on an empty stomach after a 16 hour fast simply because the food that you eat prior to testing can have an effect on that blood sugar spike so with that in mind, let's have a look at the glucose monitor here to see what actually happened. And you can see here the blood sugar spike went up by 38 milligrams. That's to be expected. This is mostly carbohydrates. This is our benchmark for tomorrow. We're going to be testing this rice, except I'm going to be cooking this in coconut oil in an attempt to bring down this blood sugar spike. I'm really curious to see if this is going to work. Remember that individual results will vary. Stay tuned for more. Cool. Uh, he's done a video after cooking rice and coconut oil also. We'll watch that. So today I'm testing rice that has been cooked with coconut oil to see if it will help to reduce a blood sugar spike. So apparently by cooking rice with coconut oil and then refrigerating it for 12 hours, you can increase the resistant starch and help to reduce a blood sugar spike. Not sure if it's missing anything, but if I remember correctly, that's exactly what the study said in the video I did recently. So basically you want to prepare the rice like you normally would, but you're going to add two teaspoons of coconut oil to the boiling water for every cup of rice. Then put it in the fridge for 12 hours to build up that resistant starch. Also, you can reheat this and it should retain its added resistant starch. I've been getting a ton of requests to do this test and I'm really curious to see if it's going to work. Let's see what it does to my blood sugar. All right, it's been a couple of hours since I've had the rice cooked with coconut oil. Before we look at today's results, let's look at yesterday's results. Here I had five ounces of regular cooked rice. You can see the blood sugar spike went up here by 38 milligrams. And now let's look at today's results. This is five ounces of rice as well, cooked with that coconut oil. And you can see here, the blood sugar spike only went up by 20 milligrams. And I am really impressed with this one. I did not expect this to be true. I've tested regular rice put in the refrigerator overnight before with just marginal results. But this one here today with the coconut oil seems to have made a really big difference. It really seems to reduce my blood sugar spike almost by 50%. It's important to remember that individual results will vary with all of this stuff. Stay tuned for more. So that's it for this video. This page is insulin resistant and all he does every single video is measure his uh, blood sugar spikes on different foods. And I think he has a glucose monitor that uh, directly measures real time blood sugar. Uh, it's got so uh, you might have heard of uh, I forgot the name of the company in India. It's uh, there's a company called extreme human i forgot so what they do is they um so you put it on the back of your arm and uh, it actually has a small not sharp but needle like projection it, it doesn't hurt you i believe uh it goes straight into your bloodstream and measures real-time sugar and it's able to collect this data and you've got pages like these that obsess over the data that that device gives you and talks about blood sugar spikes on different foods and uh, there are many pages not just this one that uh, obsesses over uh, this data and blood sugar spikes on different foods and uh, concludes that foods that give you a lot a very high blood sugar spike is what makes you fat the fact is i can tell you from experience and from watching a lot of reliable diet coaches and nutrition uh, experts that that is not a fact the situation where measuring or monitoring your blood sugar becomes useful is when you actually have a medical condition that 
doesn't allow you to regulate blood sugar like diabetes type 1 or type 2 now in such cases making sure your blood sugar is within controllable levels is beneficial for your health but in all other cases if you don't have a medical condition trust me it's completely useless to measure real-time blood sugar you'll just be wasting a lot of money getting equipment or instruments like these and uh, you know uh, a lot of time obsessing over all this data now see when you cook rice in oil any oil be it coconut oil any other oil you are increasing the total number of calories in that uh, food whether your carbohydrates don't give your body enough calories or don't give your body that many calories your net calories are going up by adding oil to your food and what matters more than anything is net calories because that will affect how many calories your body actually stores or expends after your deficit after whatever you expend you burn so it's important to make sure you have an eye on the total calories you're consuming whether or not you get blood sugar spikes you don't get blood sugar spikes what's more important is total calories now this is i'm talking only about people that don't have a medical condition that doesn't allow them to regulate blood sugar properly now people often love to misinterpret me and so i must say that along with whatever you have simple carbs or complex carbs whether your blood sugar spikes or whether it's uh, more uh, regular over time you have to make sure you get enough nutrition you get all the nutrients your body requires make sure you're having adequate protein adequate fiber adequate micronutrients and for that the main thing i always recommend is eat a lot of fruit and veg and complex carbs generally have a lot more fiber it's more beneficial to eat them but in no way in no way does that mean do not eat simple carbs you can have white rice i have ice cream every day but i'm in no way promoting that you eat ice cream all the freaking time you don't get all your nutrition from simple carbs you will be deficient in many things eat a lot of uh, fruits and veg trust me all your micronutrients you will keep them in check if you have health insurance try and get medical tests done every year the main thing to remember don't use hack like hacks like these that help you reduce your blood sugar uh, it's almost next to useless unless you actually have a medical condition don't obsess over all this data just on the packet just read the packet uh, declaration of number of calories and that is more than enough for you and this is what i do and i've been really successful with that and I'm coming out with a diet video where I talk about my own fat loss journey. You've seen a before video, you will see an after video soon. And yeah, that's the main thing I want to say about it. Keep an eye on your total calories, total, total protein and total, you know, micronutrients and whatever. Total protein and calories are the only numbers you should actually care about. Everything else is should be an estimate, should be a ballpark number. Eventually, with experience, you'll be able to do the, the calorie numbers and protein numbers also as ballparks. But that's about all I want to say on this video. I will see you in the next one.